the strike of a light pole. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. The micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. I heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper, hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. Activate the cloaking device. Hello again, and welcome back to Ratchet and Clank, Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And this week, we are taking on Hollow Star Studios, which is a Giant Clank level, if I remember correctly. It's a Giant Clank and a Ratchet segment. It's, it's got a twofer in there. And Ratchets and a Bellhop. And I think, Tony, I think this is another level that the two of us both worked on. Uh, I don't know about that. I think you worked on the enemy segment in this level, and I worked on the Clank stuff. So we may not have worked on it together, but, you know. I'm, I, I might have worked on some enemy stuff. I don't know if I worked on the enemy segment proper, but we'll see. I mean, my memory isn't great as to everything that I worked on in this game. So. And yes, we'll Ratchet is in a bellboy costume. And right back into it oh, man. with Secret Agent Clank. Starting with Secret Agent Clank, all right. Uh, and I, there we go, I have control. Come on. Yeah! So I designed this segment. Uh, I designed all the Clank segments in this game. Uh, this one I really liked though. I think of the, the Clank segments we did, this one was probably the best. Ah! Uh, except I'm... Oh, Mike. So the idea, Tony, is that they're filming a movie, right? Right. And the director's giving me directions about what to do in the movie the whole time. And these are little mini ninjas. And he's a secret agent. It's it's good times, you know? It is. So the uh, the story I promised at the end of the last episode is going to have to come when we get to Giant Clank. Oh, so you're just going to make people wait even longer. I think so. I mean... You made them wait a whole week, and now you're going to make them wait till the end of the episode. Oh, look, we did uh, slot machines again. Oh, look at that. Is this uh, Greg again? Uh, I don't know. Probably. I forgot about these. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, never mind. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, it was a little easier doing Clank gameplay with Secret Agent Clank than it was with regular Clank. Just. Oh, uh, why so? Because it's more combat oriented? Yeah, yeah, you could get away with uh, just sort of cheesier you know, le uh, harder to explain mechanics. Like, for example, Scrunch and the banana, or, uh, you know, why are, why are you dodging lasers? That sort of thing. This puzzle, man. You wouldn't think this puzzle would be so hard to solve, but we had to do a lot of work to get it solvable. Uh, so far, not a very interesting episode. Not so far, but it's your level, Mike. You're the one that's supposed to be telling, giving us wonderful insights. Yeah, but you're the one who's supposed to be that's prompting me and you. asking me questions and helping me remember. <laughs> like my 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 brilliance, Tony, is not the entire equation. There's two there's two members of this team. Oh look, there's the Gadgetbots. Yes, there's the Gadgetbots. Um, well, the, you know, it's it's difficult to do a Clank segment without the Gadgetbots. It's almost expected. Woo! Run, Scrunch, run! It's sad that the, uh, uh... You know, like, the fake backdrops and stuff only existed in that one part of the level. Oh, right. Yeah, the rest of it kinda loses a little bit of the, uh... Being on a movie set yeah, that's sort, sort of aesthetic. Well, what if I remember correctly, we were, like, way behind on this level. Uh, and the, the art came in really late for it. And uh, it just, we didn't have time to do that kind of custom, you know, custom artwork for every part of the, the level. But, you know, there was supposed to be, you know, they got the, the casino theme in there, the fake cars driving by on the fake highway. That was, was pretty good. I remember the, uh, the giant clank set looks very nice. I do like the way the giant clank set turned out. Oh, oh here we are. Here we are. Oh, it's not, I thought this was a little bit later, but no, apparently it's coming up right now. Terror of frickin' Talos. So, I guess as we promised last time, uh, I'm gonna have to try to fight Terror of Talos and tell you the story. Yeah, it seems that's how it's gonna have to go. So the original design for this guy was insane. 
I think... I think I, I had a little... So he was supposed to be a, an organic monster that had a... Uh, but it, it wasn't like a real monster. It was a dude in a monster suit. Right, this was supposed to be like Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, like a Godzilla fight. And, uh, and the dude in the monster suit was supposed to uh, have a robot on top of his head controlling him with little levers. And he was supposed to have... Uh, Six arms that were connected with little strings, you know, like a, uh, like a like a suit, and, and uh, you know, like a puppet. Yeah, like right? a puppet. And yeah. and you know, and you're running, uh, you're you're running around in this area, destroying everything. And and I was I was uh, like, dur when we when we do the level designs, there's always a part of the level design where you have to you have to pitch it to the people who are going to actually be implementing it, right? You have to pitch it right. to the art team. You have to pitch it to the programming team. And oddly enough, pitching this to the programming team was pretty simple. Uh, it was just like, oh yeah, I can do that. Uh, you know, giant robot, small city, whatever, it's good, right? But when I pitched it to the artists, they were sort of upset at me. Because <laughs> what I was asking for was completely unreasonable. Uh, I mean, probably as you were listening to it, Tony, you probably thought about a thousand reasons why it would be unreasonable to do it you know, a giant puppet with uh, a robot on top of his head. and uh, Just in terms of technical limitations, but also in terms of how much work I was putting on the artists and animators for no reason. Absolutely. Right? So we were in this meeting, and it was it was me and uh, I think one other designer and Brian Algar, and then five, maybe six artists. I think we had some character artists and... Uh, uh, and so, Probably a couple animators. So it should be noted before I go further into the story that I was really proud of that stupid design. Like, <laughs> I thought that I had created the best boss battle since the the flying poop monster or the the singing poop monster in Conquer's Bad. Friend. The great mighty poop. Yeah, get it right. Like I, I I was pretty sure that nothing could ever be better than that design. And so then they just sort of systematically took it apart in front of me. Uh, you know, as to why it was a terrible idea, because and I, why it would never work, and why it would never work, yeah. And, and I, I want to point out they were right. So I'm not, I'm not saying they were wrong here. They were right, but I just had a meltdown in the middle of the, of the meeting. You know, it was just like, oh well, fuck you then if you don't want to. Like I was just really mad. Oh wow. Yeah, I was like screaming at them, and then, and then as soon as I started yelling, like they all got really quiet. And really serious because none of them was actually trying to offend me, right? They were just trying to be. Uh... They're trying to be realistic and just letting you know that this wasn't going to happen. Yeah, but I totally lost it because you know this was this was the best boss battle ever, Tony. The best boss. Oh man, I uh, so I got a, I got a stern talking to about that, and uh, Algar actually in a, a speech at Dice one year, so used that meeting as an example of how. You know, design, <laughs> design can go really far afield, and uh, and also how you know you you gotta you gotta be able to communicate and all that other stuff. So, so I got, now you're a cautionary tale. I was used as a cautionary tale, yeah. So, uh, but you know what? It, it was a cautionary tale for me too. That was the important thing. I learned so something. What was it about? I'm trying to just get into your mindset here. Uh, it, it seems like all they really changed was um, some of the personality of the boss, but most of the mechanics seem to translate well enough yes yes uh, and so it sounds like all you were really focused on was that the personality was all you wanted to co come through i Not so much all, on the mechanic yeah all i was focused on was that they didn't want my brilliant idea uh and it's uh it's one of those realities of of game making right like it, you you sort of alluded to it a few times when we were talking about it but like when you're making a game with a bunch of people, you're not making what you you know what you want to make just because you want to make it, right? There's a thousand little things that go into every decision on this, and I was I was really new. This was the first game I'd ever been a designer on. This was the first boss I'd ever designed, so it sort of came as a shock to me to realize that I was not right, <laughs> and I don't think I handled it very well. Well, it's not even. This is a, a sounds like a weird case because it's not that you were. You were wrong necessarily. I mean, I don't think anybody would deny that adding more personality to a boss would make it better. Right. Um, yeah. It's simply just a matter of it's not feasible. Exactly. Uh, yeah. What I was what I was asking them to do, just for technical reasons and for t 
time reasons was just not it couldn't happen not on the ps2 right. and not in the time that we had so yeah that, so yeah so it's not even a matter of not wanting it it's a matter of just re coming to realize that uh it's not it's just not going to happen and it's not even because it's a bad idea it's just not going to happen in a lot of ways that's even harder to swallow uh when people are like yeah, okay look it's a good idea uh i wish we could do it but it's not going to happen uh that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes when you have to come to that sort of uh realization and i think it was actually something lloyd said in the meeting that set me off in the first place and it's funny because it's lloyd right knowing lloyd 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 would never intentionally make anyone like actually upset uh, i he was he's he, he was joking he was joking right but what he said was is he's just like so when you uh it was either he said this or Gurton said it i forget but he was like um so what do you do like when you're designing do you just roll dice and like okay so he's gonna be a monster and he's gonna have puppet arms and he's gonna do all this and it's like you know he was he was he was mocking it a little bit but that sounds like not, a Gurton thing not in su not in such a way that i should have you know freaked out about it though right 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 but yeah, it, and you're you're exactly right, right? Like what what the final boss battle was was exactly what I pitched, just with some minor, you know, theatrical differences. Right. And that's that's fine. Like, uh, you know, I I what I learned later on was that that's the sort of thing that goes on all the time, and it's it's not just a fact of life. It's it's a good thing. Because it means that you know all your bad ideas get vetted just as much as all your good ideas. Right, exactly. So anyway, that was sort of the long-winded story. I hope, I hope it didn't uh, make anyone, you know, too sad that they had to wait a whole week for that. I didn't realize that it would be so hotly anticipated. <laughs> but you know what, Tony? It, it may, maybe from now on we should end all of the episodes with cliffhangers. Uh, I know that you. Maybe. I know you love cliffhangers. I do enjoy them so much. Maybe we should do the type of cliffhanger. Where like we don't solve any of the problems that we brought up wait in the episode. Wait, 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 wait! What just happened? A what? screen came out of Clank, and it was nefarious. And now he's talking to Courtney Gears. That was just weird. I don't think that made a lot of sense. <laughs> it was always kind of weird with the uh, whenever we needed to play an Infobot or something. Like having that screen in the cutscene was always something like a weird. It always ended up being a really weird thing, right? Like. Uh, in Ratchet 2, there was like a television screen on a wall in a desert cave. You know, like... Yeah, we, yeah, we, it was always some weirdness. The Infobots were probably the least weird thing about it, but... You, yeah, when we actually used for real Infobots, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, later on, it was just like, oh, there happens to be a screen here, or Clank's got right. one inside of him. Which is a little weird. Oh, we're going to get separated from Clank, Tony. Well, we already were separated from Clank. Well, I mean, we're going to get separated for a little while. We're going to have Scrunch. Or, not Scrunch. Uh, what was uh, what was Clank's evil twin brother? Oh, Clunk. Uh, I don't remember the name. Clunk, right? Clunk or Crunk or something like that. I mean, I wish I could actually hear what was going on because that would... Uh, Man, uh, Carl Grande was a huge Clunk fan. He was. He, uh, uh, almost unreasonably so. I think any level of being a Clunk fan would be unreasonably so, considering he's just basically Clank. And he doesn't really have much to do uh, in general. Did you know he was the ultimate bad guy in uh, Secret Agent Clank? Oh, was he really? Yeah. He, he it turn, as it turns out he was the uh, he was behind it all. That's awesome. So you did you did have something to do with this level, right? Like uh, I mean I when we talked about it before I did do all the tier nodes. Got um, it. So you 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 had to deal with the setups and stuff. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, it's a uh, tier I don't think I was thing. actually in here doing enemy placements and stuff like that uh, this time around. Oh, so uh, one I thing I learned from the. Are painted or something? Are they what? These guys are all painted. They don't look like normal tier. 
Uh, I, that just might be the camera. Because they look normal to me. These are just the three-eyed Tyranoids. Right, right, right. Oh, well. And there's a four-eyed Tyranoid. I do like the four-eyed Tyranoid. I like those guys a lot. I like that effect that they shot out. Isn't that just your uh, last effect ever? No, it's just a laser beam. Uh, How d how'd you do this one? That one, uh, that was basically just the same laser beam that's on the, uh, that's on the Tyranoids on the mechs, but with just a couple more splashes of, uh, particles on there. Give that a bit of a but it's, it's still just the laser beam from the mechs, just sort mm -hmm. of slightly modified a little bit. Got it. Like, it looks like you've got, like, a, maybe a scrolling quad and a, a particle at either end or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty much exactly what's going on. Cool. I really like that laser. I was just a big fan <laughs> of it. There's a secret here, right? Isn't there like a golden bolt I can get? Maybe. Or I could play the fucking hacker. <laughs> I thought the the biggest problem I kept having, uh, and I was when we were we were watching uh, Ratchet and Clank Future play uh, earlier today. And uh, it reminded me that one of my biggest problems I had in making this game was making the effects feel like they had some volume to them. Because they were all just 2D particles, uh, it was really, really hard to make the effects feel like they had any sort of volume and weight or whatever. Uh, mostly, also mostly because, you know, I'm not trained as an effects artist. Uh, I'm just a programmer. Uh, and that was always like, I was so, always like kind of such a hard time. Or and when I look back at like you know what they were doing on the PS3, something like everything just has so much more weight and volume, and the textures are so much nicer, and it just makes me kind of jealous of what we had to deal with when we were here on the uh, on the PS2, like just struggling to make our effects sort of look passable. What do you think they they have on the PS3 version that makes their effects look more volume? Uh, you know, I mean, you can have a lot more particles. Uh, they they got a better uh, particle editor. I'm pretty sure they got a part. The particle editor was made in for the resistance, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So the so the actual um, artists would you know effects artists would do the effects instead of programmers. Right. Doing right. Right. Effects. And I mean they could just push so many more particles uh, when you can do a lot more texture and you can do when you can do a lot more texture work and you can push a lot more particles. It's a lot easier to sort of make everything have a little more weight and volume to it. We just didn't really have that luxury. We could maybe use uh, 15, 20 particles. Uh, and, and that's not even, like maybe if we were spawning like three particles a frame, uh, we were looking at like, you know, maybe possibly breaking the frame rate. So we had to be very careful. Even if we were doing that. Um, so we could, we, could, we could have more than three particles on the screen, but you, you wouldn't spawn more than three of them a frame because they would live longer than one right, frame. Right, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, there was just, uh, it was always a consideration to make sure you weren't leaving too many particles hanging around. Their lifetime had to be fairly short, and there was just a lot of those kind of factors that sort of made it really hard to give. I, I mean, it, and the, a lot of these also just go away when you can actually author the texture and look at it in an editor and just see how it's really sort of working out. We didn't really have that ability. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about what the what making particle effects was like in the Ratchet engine? Because I think, like, we've had a, a good luck with the technical segment so far. Maybe people would be interested in that. Um, I mean, there's not too much that goes on there. Uh, if you know anything about particles, is a particle is really just a 2D billboard. Uh, on the meaning that it always, it always faces, faces the, the camera. camera. So it's basically just a 2D square, uh, you know, texture that always faces the camera. And you can, you know, use alpha and stuff to make it appear circular or whatever. But it always it always looks right. the for, camera. For example, the in the hacker puzzle we're playing right now, all of these things are 2D billboards. There's no 3D geometry here. Right. And so um, what happens is you can kind of get away with us. If you take a circle and it always faces the camera, when the camera is spinning around it, it'll kind of look spherical. Uh, since the circle is always facing the camera, it kind of tricks you into thinking that it's actually a sphere, and it mostly does the job. But it doesn't really do the job. Like you, if you, you know, if you catch it at the wrong angle, you know, if you're if you put two particles on top of each other, and then or you try to offset the orientation a little bit, it kind of kills the effect. And you know, there's a lot of ways where it doesn't quite look 
exactly. Right. I mean, it, it's still just a 2D, a 2D, you know, texture always facing the camera, and it's you know, to make it actually look like a sphere, it's pretty hard. What we would really want to do is just make a sphere and then put it in there and, and move it and manipulate it. Um, and the, you know, there I'm pretty sure their particle engine at this point can will probably is able to support, you know. Uh, Geometry and a lot of places do that where instead of just having a straight texture you can have geometry with you. It's like the particle and you can have you know physics and stuff like that and it works pretty well So we had a we had a little bit of that right like with uh, with the, the spawning chunks and uh, <laughs> Yeah, but and the way chunks were set up is you couldn't just spawn a chunk out in the middle of nowhere uh, The chunk was set up in the model file and it always spawned off the skeleton you couldn't just say Spawn this little crate piece. What about have it? Oh, sorry. What about those uh, like the little thing, the little things that fly off the uh, bomb glove? Say. Uh, those are particles. Oh, uh, they're, and they're not three D. Like like the little chunks that fly up on the ground. Yeah, those are just two D billboards. Huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's, and that's the thing is you can get away with a lot, uh, but a lot of that is dependent on having a very uh, a very good texture. And if you can make a custom texture for every particle, you can get away with it and, you know, make sure the texture is shaded right and all that sort of stuff, and you can you can make it happen. But when you have to reuse, you know, when you don't have an artist who's just dedicated to making particle textures, uh, it's very hard to just use what you have. I think we had a stock, and I think we, I think by the end of RC3, um, I think the number of textures we had that were, you know, for use for particles was at about maybe 83 to 100. Uh, and that's not a lot. Like, that's a very small number considering the number of effects that we have. Uh, 93 to 100 is very small uh, for basically all the effects that have been in Ratchet 1, 2, and 3. Because we never got rid of the thing. And if, you'd like, if you're interested in what the uh, library of stock particle textures is, you can look in the Insomniac Museum in the, the particle editors. Uh, you can actually look at all of the textures there. Right. Uh, oh, I uh, found something out about the uh, hacker. Remember how we were? How I was saying I put in that cheat so that... <laughs> Tony, what the hell? I don't know what's going on there. I don't know where he's trying to run to. It looks like he's trying to run into the wall. I, I don't know he's about... He's trying to go somewhere. <laughs> uh... Turns out it actually is that that cheat I put in is still in the game. I just uh, since I was in lock strafe, crouches on a different button. Oh. <laughs> uh, and I looked at the actual button and not, you know, what mode you were in. Blank. Where have you been? I but yeah, if you hold R1 while you're on a hacker pad and and play it, it will turn off the difficulty tuning. Where's Courtney? Uh, and it'll let you replay all the hacker puzzles if you want. What? So that's good, right? What about Nefarious? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Nefarious. Easter egg. Doctor Nefarious is aboard a star cruiser called. What is his name? He's he's. Um, Kronk. Okay. Nice job. Kank. So. Clunk. I don't know. I think it's Clunk. K L U N K. Mary, do you remember the name of Clank's evil alter ego? I really don't. Yeah. Oh well, well I think that's all for Hollow Star Studios. Yeah, that was quick. Nice, quick little level. Yeah. Uh, so for uh, Ratchet and Clank developer commentary, my name's Mike Stout, and I'm Tony Garcia, and we'll catch you next time. All right, that's not too bad. <laughs>